Okay, so using mark pauses and then some light hand editing, we have now blank intervals for everything we want to save, and all the junk we don't want to save is marked as triple X. So now what I want to go in is uh, label these intervals as something appropriate. So remember this was item one, repetition one, so I might call it, for instance, one dash one. This was, I think, one two, so I might just call it one two. This, I think, was item two, right? Item two. Yes, item two, repetition one, so I might call that two dash one. This, I believe, was still item two, so two dash two for repetition two. Item two, repetition three. So that was item two, repetition three. Two dash three. Let's call this three dash one for item three, repetition one. And three dash two for item three, repetition two. All right, so now I've labeled out, I've uh, put in meaningful labels um, and this is important because these labels will then be used by our next script to determine the file names for the individual audio files saved. So, all right, let me first quickly first save this text grid because I've edited it again and added in these labels. So now I'm saving it in the same directory as before. So let's go ahead and save it. All right, and good. Now what we're going to do is open up the second script. So I just did command O, read object from file. For PC users, that'd be control O. And let's open up save labeled intervals to wave sound files dot prot. All right, so now we have this open. Let's take a look at it. Um, so again, user settings you can change are here in where it says form and form. A couple things we might do um, I'll mention a few of these when we look in the dialog box that pops up, but here we want to specify a few things. So give the folder where to save the sound files. So there's individual sound files, one per sentence. Where do you want them to save? Here I specified them to save here in tokens. So that's this directory here I've just um, opened. Notice right now there's nothing in it. Uh, okay. And don't forget this forward slash, or PC users, you might have a backslash. And here's a neat thing. We can give an optional prefix for all the file names. So here's one I put with the date and then the speaker female F01. And then it would be, the rest of the file name would be determined by whatever's in this interval. So here, 1-1, one, one, the actual file name that would be saved would be 2015-1022-F01111.wave. Um, all right, I think that's probably all we need to do here. Um, now, in order to run the script, we need to select the long sound and the corresponding text grid, and then hit run. Now, I promised to make a few more comments when I saw this dialog, when we saw got to this dialog box. Note here you can say which interval tier you'd like to process. That's tier one for us. Here there's a few different options. We can say exclude empty labels. So um, for instance, if you remember that last little interval in the, um, in the original text grid was empty at first, but then I marked it up with triple X, um, but we could have just left it empty and this would say ignore those as well. This says ignore the XXX, don't save those and also ex exclude intervals starting with dot. So any anything like that will not be saved. Um, and this margin is just that uh, where you set down the boundaries, it will um, slightly expand them to the left and to the right, just to make sure you don't accidentally cut off something. So this says expand it to the right and to the left by 0 0.01 seconds on each side. All right, let's go. So I hit OK. And seven sound files will be saved. Sounds good. Hit continue. And whoa, look at that. Now I have all of these individual sound files um, in tokens. If I open these all in prot, if I say shift and then select and open with prot, then look at this. I'll hit play. Item one, repetition one. Hey, look at that. Item one, repetition three. Oops. Oh, I guess maybe, th oh right, maybe that was actually, a, well, sh I should have labeled that three, but item two, 
item 2, item 2, repetition 2, and so forth. So you can see it's done exactly what we wanted. And so now we've gone from having this big old audio file with all those sentences in it to having a nice directory with one file per individual sentence repetition.